Okay, it's another day. <laughs> twilight Zone by the Golden Earring is on. I feel like I am stepping into the Twilight Zone here. I am just cutting up this car. But I'm just trying to get down to what's good. And then I'll build up and then it'll be great. So I put some tape here so I don't overdo it. I'm getting ready to cut what's left of this wing out. You can see I've got the rear lower tonneau out. Um, and it, it can be very ugly as you're going along. But you're gonna clean that all up as you go. And I'm, I'm hoping to leave these boot sides in place. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to straighten them out though as much as I want to. I might have to cut them out, straighten them and put them back. I don't know, we'll see. Kind of making this up as I go along. But I am just trying to get down to all good stuff and then I'll dress up all the flanges and then we'll just build back up. Okay, I got that out and I got some of the inner wheel arch out. So far, I don't think I've screwed up what's left of the wiring harness. Um, now, up front, I gotta cut this out, and I told you I'm gonna make these panels wider, but what I'm gonna do here, since I only need about another, I mean, not even half an inch. Um, this is how the factory does it on a Roadster. They have this panel standing up, and this panel is about maybe a quarter inch from the skin of the wing itself. Then they've got this piece in here riveted on, and I call that a ceiling retainer. And they have a piece of rubber back in there that's just wrapped around like this and pushes against the skin of the wing, and then they just undercoat all of it. So that's, that's bone stock in there. So what I'm going to do is leave this panel, which I call the shut face rear panel, and see it's, it's, it's right about here. I'm gonna leave that panel whole, and then I'm just gonna make a bigger one of these that's about, a, that's about a half inch wider so that it does come out and touch the skin. So that's the plan for that. And I'm gonna be able to do that on both sides. So stay tuned. Okay, we're getting there. I took the door off, and you can see I've got this wing cut out now. I've got that little piece off of there. Um, that I was showing you on the other side. And it's, I mean, in my mind, it's starting to look better. Um, what I'm trying to do is get the big cutting down because it smells and it's dangerous. And there's sparks flying everywhere. This work of cutting all of this stuff out is the most dangerous work that we do in the shop. You, you think the machines look dangerous, but if you use your head, you'll be all right. But when you're using that grinder with the disc and it's getting caught, that's where you get into trouble. Anyway, I, I still got to cut off this sill now, but I'm starting to see what happened here. If you come over, the roll cage looks like it has been gone through a few iterations, and I think it might have started out with a roll bar, and then people have added to it over the years. And you can see where this piece here that braces around the door was bolted in, but it doesn't unbolt now because it has now had additional things welded to it. So this isn't a bolt-in cage. It's just that portions of it were in the past. But at any rate, take a look here. Here's where I was trying to show you in the earlier videos where we've got a bulge coming out here. But now that the door is off and I'm taking a better look, you can see we've got this wrinkle here. All right, now let me go over here. I figured out what has basically happened. The roll cage has held the floor and all of that pretty much intact. And you can see how the roll cage ties the forward bulkhead into the rear chassis legs. And, and there's a little bit of wrinkling right here. But what has happened is when the wreck came in, it came in and crushed all this stuff. That all stayed intact but it did send kind of a shock wave down through this shut face and down into here. So again, all of that is tied in with the roll cage, but for the sill from here, this section and up into the shut face has kind of gone and, and gotten shoved forward. And that's why our door doesn't fit anymore. So I'm gonna cut the left, or this is the right, I'm gonna cut the right sill off 
it's shot, it's all wrinkled up down in there. I'll get that out of there, and then I'll start trying to hammer and dolly and, and pull this back. Now, someone on one of the other earlier videos had already posted a thing about maybe you should mount it down and start pulling it before you cut it apart. I am of the opinion that you shouldn't pull E-types in a frame table. Um, there's a lot of reasons for it. It's a pretty strong structure, but really there's nowhere to grab it where you're not going to possibly pull that apart instead of pulling what you want to pull. And also, stay right there, an E-type is not a modern car. The spot welding in it, it's strong enough to hold it together. But see, notice in here, you can see this is that piece that I pulled off the back. That is a spot welded seam, and it has just, it's just come right unzipped. You like that little sound there? Um, these spot welds were not strong enough to hold that together and you didn't get a nugget. A nugget is when is for testing spot welds where you do a bunch of spot welds, you pull it apart, you should end up with one piece of metal with a row of holes and the other piece of metal with the holes stuck to it. Well, you didn't get that here. That means you didn't get the penetration. And also with an older E-type, now this one is not like that, but all of these seams, especially down in the shut face and all that, We've showed you many times, these seams are rusted in here. They're 60 years old. They're not as, as solid as they used to be. We just showed you they weren't that great when they were new. So if you try to lock this thing down and start yanking on it, you may move things around to where you want them, but then you find out later that you've torn something up there, seams come apart here, this has ripped apart. You can't do it that way. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm first just getting rid of all the wrinkled stuff that I know has to go anyway. Then I'm down to a much smaller, a smaller structure that's going to be a little easier to move around. So after I get this sill off and start trimming things up some, we should be able to kind of just pull this back into place. I mean, not by hand, but probably with like a couple ratchet straps and just get her going. Seems to be only out by, you know, quarter inch at most. You get a lot of wrinkling from a little movement. I mean, this thing might be pushed forward less than an eighth of an inch, but you've got that big wrinkle. So anyway, I've had a lot of coffee this morning, but that's what's going on right now. I'm trying to get the big cutting done, and then, I, then it's going to take a lot more time to kind of trim things up. Stay tuned. Okay, got the sill cut off, and before I fully pull it off, I want to show you what we're finding as we go. Now, for starters, when you cut a sill off, I always whack the front off first. You want to make sure you don't cut this little flange off any, but I slice the front off first, and then... When you're slicing along the top, you want to, on your A post and B post, there's a lot going on in this seam. This is a leaded seam, so make sure you're wearing a respirator when you cut through this in any way. Um, but leave about an inch there to just get the ball rolling. Then you can melt the lead out and start picking away at this seam. But over here, you can cut straight down, and here, you can just stick the slicing wheel right in that channel and cut along like that. Now there is a flange here that is spot welded and I'm gonna have to either drill out those spot welds or grind it off. It remains to be seen how I'm gonna do that. But when we first pulled this down, this is the factory sill and that's the factory primer in there. These are the factory gussets and a lot of times they'll be rusted at the bottom. You can see that they're not. What you can also see is a lot of sand. This is actually not a lot of sand. Um, but the moral to that story is when you are sandblasting an E-type, and a lot of guys tell me, you know, I think the original sills are still good. I don't need to pull them off. And, you know, that may be true. I don't want you to get carried away pulling off stuff you don't need to. But usually they're rusted along the bottom, and you're never going to be able to avoid this. Sand gets in there and there's no way to get it out. So we typically have the car sandblasted after we've pulled the sills off. Um, if you're gonna replace the sills, it doesn't really matter, but just keep that in mind. When you are sandblasting these cars, you, you think you're not getting any sand in there, but you are. Another thing to note is this is a 67 
This seam here in the front and the back is not spot welded to the sill. They've just put a sealer in there. It's probably the same glue that they use on the bonnets. You can see that there in the front and the back. I, my theory is that they just got sick of cleaning up the spot welds and doing the hammer and dolly and letting those spot welds front and back. It does make the car weaker. I don't know by how much, but you know, when you're welding up this box section, it's going to be stronger than if it's just got some sealer in it like that. But we usually put the hidden subframe tubing in all the cars, and then we have the heavy duty gussets that go into that. So with that added in there, you don't need to go overboard and spot weld these like they did on the three eights. If you've got that tubing in there, but if you don't have the tubing, I do recommend spot welding this flange to this seam. That's how it was originally designed. They just got a little lazy on the bodywork phase and got sick of doing it. All right, so we're going to pull that off. And then we've got the long process of drilling out all these spot welds and peeling these little pieces of flange off. We'll melt the lead out and we'll get that. We'll get this all off and then and so on and so forth all the way back. All right, we started cutting this side out and I started getting some smoking and smoldering and I couldn't figure out what that was, but it's that. So, stand by. All right, based on the sand and the moisture in the sand on the other side, and it was kind of starting to get some surface rust going and all, I called Brian and he said, take both sills off. There's probably sand in the other one. Um, and also we had talked about maybe putting the hidden subframe tubing in this car for some extra support. So we're gonna go ahead and do that too. Um, but so I started to cut this side off and I started getting some smoking and I pulled this down. And as you can see, we've got a mouse nest or some kind of critter nest in there and what looks like a ton of sand. So. Give me a second and let me finish. When you make these cuts, sometimes you just gotta chisel the corners out. We'll pull this down and I'll show you the sand in this side too, all right? So hang on. Okay, I got the corners chiseled out. We're ready to come down here. And as you, well, I think I just cut my hand right through this glove. All right, there you go. It looks like some kind of maybe walnuts or something. There's the critter nest. And then here's all that. And it's not too bad. There's not too much in here. I guess it all moves up to the front under heavy braking. But so, but you can see, you know, you're getting the rust coming up here. This is the factory primer. This looks really good in here, uh, aside from the sand. So we will be pulling this off. And on both sides, we're gonna cut these gussets out. We're gonna weld a piece of heavy duty rectangular tubing across here, and then we're gonna put our heavy duty gussets in. All right, let's finish getting this one off. 